Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank Senator Kang for that very powerful and compelling summary of concerns that I share, and I won't give my own version of them because he stated them very well, and you've been here for a long time, and I thank you for being here so patiently and uh, so informatively to this committee. I noted, uh, Mr. Secretary, that there was a note of pride in your voice when you said you were not a lawyer. Uh, f for which uh, I forgive you. Uh, I only meant that I was a physicist. <laughs> there are many days that I wish I were a physicist, and there's no way I could be. So uh, thank you both for your service. Uh, I want to uh, explore an issue that I think is uh, extremely important, the evolving military cooperation between Russia and Iran. It may have been mentioned here, but not in depth. Uh, there have been reports in recent weeks that have highlighted Russia's shipment of parts, uh, the S-300 air defense system, I believe, to Iran. In addition, Russia and Iran are uh, supposedly in talks over the Sukhoi fighter jet and possible shipment of that weapons platform. If these systems are delivered, clearly there has been a violation of UN Security Council 2231. Uh, I'm not an international lawyer, but it seems pretty clear that would be a violation, uh, which requires Security Council approval for the sale of any major combat systems to Iran for the next five years. Supplying weapons to Iran is uh, particularly dangerous because it's not done in a vacuum. Supplying weapons uh, reflects a growing partnership that has far-reaching ramifications for Hezbollah uh, because that is Iran's tech terrorist proxy. It also benefits at least indirectly uh, from Russian arms and military operational experience in Syria. So uh, my question to both of you, may I begin with uh, General Dunford, is what are the implications for Israel if Iran continues to receive military equipment in Russia, and what would the United States have to do to counter it? Uh, Senator, thanks. And, and I think uh, clearly there are implications for Israel. I've, I've visited now a couple of times here over the last few months, and, and the Israelis view uh, the developments in Iran with great concern. And that has a lot to do with our continued commitment to, make, to ensuring that Israel maintains a qualitative military edge in the theater. And so the implications are that we will continue to work very closely with the Israelis to make sure that they have the capabilities and the capacities. As you know, they now talk about QME2, meaning not just the capability, but also the capacity to deal with threats in the region. And so I think our commitment to, to uh, what the Israelis now call QME2 is, is really uh, the most appropriate response to the developments in Iran. But I, but I do share your concern, and I know the Israelis do as well. Secretary Carter, uh, what can be done to stem the flow of arms in this way. Obviously, there are potential diplomatic steps. Are there also military steps that can be taken? Uh, first of all, let me associate myself with what the, uh, the, the, the chairman just said. But um, there are both diplomatic and military steps. I don't mean military steps in the sense of attacking, but I mean in, in posture. Um, it, the diplomatic ones I can't speak to, but there is a uh, a, a um, body of uh, 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 UN Security Council resolutions. They're not just one. There are a number of them. I'm not an expert on that, but I know uh, they do apply, uh, and they should constrain countries that are supplying uh, Iran with dangerous arms because of Iran's other activities in terms of supporting terrorism, in terms of ballistic missile threats, and so forth, for which they have been sanctioned and which are and which sanctions were not uh, a part of the Iran nuclear deal. Right. To the military provisions, I'd just say this. This is one of the reasons that uh, I was in the Gulf, and the president asked me to go there before him uh, last week, is to talk to our Gulf partners about fortifying themselves. Uh, now, that wasn't a conversation with Israel, but I've had conversations with Israel as well. 
uh, uh, also to strengthen their capabilities. We do that in missile defense, uh, lots of other areas committed to their qualitative military edge, as the chairman uh, indicated. Um, and of course, they have broader concerns than Iran, but Iran is their principal concern. That's the reason, one of the reasons, we have our, a huge posture in the Middle East, uh, military posture, U.S. military posture. Part of that is ISIL, but the other one is, I, is the other I. It's ISIL, and then there's Iran, and that's why we're there. And to underscore deterrence, to de support our friends and allies, especially including Israel, uh, against Iranian aggression and malign influence. So it's a very important. Uh, I take it that this continuing flow of arms, and I would appreciate your views and commitment in this regard, will be taken into account in the negotiations on the memorandum of understanding that are ongoing right now as, as we speak. Uh, yes, those, those discussions are conducted by the White House, but obviously completely informed by the views of myself and the, uh, uh, and the chairman on the military dimensions of it, and, and extensive discussions that I have with my colleagues, including my good friend, the Defense Minister of Israel, Boogie Alon, and, and that um, the chairman has with his counterpart there. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Uh, 